that means that if you take a test today and that test says that you're pregnant, almost a 30% chance that you might not carry to term or you might get a miscarriage. That is super high. Hi, welcome to the Health Hub. I am Anne and today I will be discussing a topic that is not really spoken of, especially in the black communities. It's That topic is miscarriages. And what brought me to having to decide to talk about miscarriages is the fact that um, I once went on YouTube and there's this lady's video I watched. The video on YouTube was about a South African lady and her experience of you know her miscarriage and how she was treated in the medical you know sector and it was in private actually and um the way she was speaking was as if she was mistreated or um managed inappropriately she was saying that she was 16 weeks pregnant and um, ruptured membranes or she passed the water and um there was no blood so she went to the hospital and the doctor then told her that she was going to lose her baby and that they were, you know they were, they, there was nothing really that they can do about it they put up a drip and that's all that was done and she felt that uh, more could have been done and that made me understand or just brought me to the realization that a lot of people don't know that there's different types of miscarriages and they are managed differently and so i decided to make this video just to shed light um regarding you know the different types of miscarriages what miscarriages are and how they're actually really managed just so that we can reflect at the end if she was actually inappropriately managed or if there was more that could actually be done a miscarriage is the spontaneous loss of a pregnancy within the first 20 weeks of gestation and it is the most common form of pregnancy loss that there is so around 26 percent of all pregnancies end in a miscarriage so you can only imagine the chances of actually you caring till the end that means that if you take a test today and that test says that you're pregnant almost a 30 percent chance that you might not carry to term or you might get a miscarriage that is super high and not only to top that off around 80 percent of the 26 percent around 80 percent of those miscarriages happen within the first trimester or the first three months of pregnancy so that then makes sense why people um, wait to tell or announce their pregnancies especially in the first three months because there's a super high chance that the pregnancy will end in a miscarriage and it has nothing to do with witchcraft or anything it's literally just god at play you carrying your baby to the end of your pregnancy is literally by the grace of God. So there's several terms that I use to describe miscarriages, right? So they are inevitable miscarriages, threatened, incomplete, complete, as well as missed miscarriage. So I'll go through the various types and explain how each present and and I will also then go through the management. In terms of the five different types of miscarriages that you get, the way in which they are distinguished is number one, sometimes by history, Number two, by examination, that is the doctor putting a finger inside or underneath to feel for the cervix. By the cervix, I mean the, basically the mouth of the womb, which should be closed when you are pregnant normally. Number three, the gold standard, which is the ultrasound scan. So this is then to see what's happening. Is there products? Is there a baby? Does the baby have a heartbeat? basically. So let's basically just start with miscarriage type number one, and that is a threatened miscarriage. So a threatened miscarriage, women will come in with a history of, you know, blood when wiping, spotting, normally happens within the first three months of pregnancy. And they then come in um, and they might have some low abdominal cramping, but it's really not a lot of bleeding. It's minimal bleeding. You know, on examination will be found to have a closed cervix so the mouth of the womb will be closed so that the baby is still inside nothing got passed and then on the scan 
you find that there's a baby, the baby is viable, the baby has a heartbeat, everything is still in place. So in this case, we call this a threatened miscarriage. And women with a threatened miscarriage are, you know, depending on the facility, because I know where I worked in Joburg, sometimes we'd admit threatened miscarriages for bed rest. Um, you know, maybe because of resources and space issues. Um, where I currently work, it may be rural settings where the space is an issue. Uh, we just book the woman off for a couple of days, tell them to just relax, stay in bed. And um, yeah, there's nothing really we give them in terms of medication. If they have cramping or a bit of cramping, sometimes you can give them Panado. You can get Panado, but that's about the only thing that you're able to get. But with regard to threatened miscarriage, that's where it ends. You also are given warning signs to let you know when to come back. So you, if you were assessed to have a threatened miscarriage and all of a sudden you're at home and you experience heavier bleeding clots, then you have to come back to the hospital. That means that the, that, means that the diagnosis has changed. So whenever I see women and they have a threatened miscarriage, um, I just tell them it's up to God. You know, it can stay, like it, the baby can survive and it can just be a threatened miscarriage and baby survives till the end and you give birth hooray at the end. Or um, basically you can end up miscarrying. So there's no way of knowing, there's no way of preventing. It's literally just bed rest and prayer. The second type of miscarriage that there is, is a missed miscarriage. Um, a missed miscarriage is almost like, a, like if I could put it in like layman's terms, it's like a stillborn, but like, while the baby is still very small. On history, there's no, sometimes no history of bleeding. Some will say they're spotting. Others won't have nothing, no symptoms, no nothing. They literally be going to the doctor for their first appointment and find out that there's no heartbeat or um, dates will not match their ultrasound scan. So you go to the doctor, you're thinking you 10 weeks and when the baby's measured, baby measures around six weeks right and then they say come back two weeks later it's still six weeks and there's no heartbeat so the baby is not viable the cervix on examination is closed and the products or the fetus and like the baby died inside at whatever point which we may not be able to pinpoint um and therefore there's no heartbeat that is seen on scan so women who present with missed miscarriages are then given uh, either treated medically or surgically or both. So some women were given like a, maybe misoprostol, which is a prostaglandin analog. They were given misoprostol to take so that to, to clean the womb and so that they expel the contents to soften the cervix and expel the contents. The woman after that will then be followed up with a scan um, to see if everything came out. If everything comes out, then they're fine and good to go. And it's meant to happen within three days after having received the doses of those pills. So if um, you don't, if there's still some products inside, even after having been treated medically, um, then you have to sometimes be, you know, done an MVA or evacuation of the uterus. So this is done with most of the time a suction curettage and you are cleaned out or an MVA is done to clean the womb, or the womb to prevent any further bleeding or infection. Miscarriage number three is an inevitable miscarriage. So the woman that was speaking um, basically had a talk on miscarriages on YouTube. I forgot her name. She was experiencing an inevitable miscarriage. It's usually either rupture of membranes or bleeding, um, the woman then will rush to the hospital to be seen by a doctor. And on examination, the doctor will find that the mouth of the womb or the cervix is open. And the moment it's open, that means the, the baby's gonna fall down, basically it's gonna come out, literally all the uterine contents will come out because it acts like a stopper. And it only is meant to open when you are giving birth, hence why they take dilation. So um, in that case, the mouth of the womb is open and there's a baby inside. On scan, you find the baby is alive. This is what you know touches people the most or will trigger people the most and make them think that they're being mismanaged. Because on scan, the baby is alive and kicking. There's a heartbeat, it's a viable baby. But you know, there's nothing that can be done. No one can, you know, suture the mouth of the womb back together, you know. No one can push the baby back in and secure and fill the uterus up with water. Nothing, literally nothing can 
be done it will happen you one will miscarry at least within the next couple of hours so normally when i see patients in this category i just normally tell them that hey this is what's going to happen this is when you have to explain nicely because they'll be like okay but there's a heartbeat this is where you have to be you know sensitive about this whole issue because then people will find it hard to understand. So in that woman's case, the doctor put up a drip, which was appropriate because obviously in case she bleeds out, whatever, you don't want it to be hypovolemic. And it's literally a wait and watch game. So patients in this category are, are admitted to the hospital and basically they just are... Uh, they just wait until the fetus is passed and the placenta is passed. Once everything is out, um, they then are, you know, sent home. The fourth type of miscarriage is a complete miscarriage. And women who fall under the complete miscarriage category um, will bleed out clots at home initially. By the time they get to the hospital, um, they're seen by the doctor, the, uter the, the cervix is open. Um, and then you find that when you do a scan, there is the uterus is empty but in this case you have to not be the fooled because the highest most dangerous differential um is an ectopic pregnancy because ectopic pregnant patients also bleed out and can even bleed out and get clots basically um so when they come to you they have a, an empty uterus so you have to have a high index of suspicion for ectopic pregnancies and even your me, myself, and I have been caught out by this, thinking that ish, it's a complete miscarriage, Ganti. I was on a topic. Yeah, we live and we learn. And women with complete miscarriages um, are then sent home and reassured. Um, and then there is incomplete miscarriages. So these women come in and have a history of having bled out clots. When you examine them, the, you know, the cervix is open because obviously there's that, still some things that still need to come out when you do a scan products that are still inside. So then in this case, um, they are either managed uh, medically or surgically. Most of the time in public, we do surgical management really 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 do we do medical management but i know because in private there's you know the patients do follow up that you can you know give the patient misoprostol um or pills basically manage the the the, pre, the incomplete miscarriage medically give them misoprostol so that they pass the rest of the products um out and then have them follow up um, for scans and stuff like that whereas in public you know that whole thing of follow up um, and also there's lost follow-up, also there's issues of distance, especially in things of rural areas. So most of the time, patients like that are managed surgically. So we will do an MVA. If a patient is stable, we do a manual vacuum aspiration. That's done in the procedure room. If you haven't watched my previous video, just quickly go watch it or watch it when you're done watching this one, where I showcase how a gynae procedure room actually looks like. So um, then you're able to see the different types of equipment and things that you are expected to be found in a gynae room. So yeah, um, we do an MVA or manual vacuum aspiration. And then if a patient is hemodynamically unstable, they get to the hospital, they're collapsing, they have low blood pressures, um, bled out a lot and have lost a lot of blood with low HBs, which is what marks the amount of blood in your, in your body. Um, then we have to take them to theater to do an evacuation of the uterus, just to do a DNC or dilation and curatage in theater, because at least in theater, um, you're able to, you know, transfuse and, you know, manage the patient holistically. That's what happens. That's why some people will end up in theater if they bled out a lot and, um, you know, they, you know, get to the hospital, they're collapsing. We still, we do it and uh, we do it in theater. And also we don't do an MVA if a pregnancy is, is, is more than 13 weeks. So the cutoff is around 13 weeks. So then if you come in and you have products or incomplete miscarriage um, and you were more than 13 weeks, then you have to be taken to theater for, um, for dilation and curatage so that your uterus is cleaned out in theater instead of it being cleaned out in one of those rooms.